everyone, my name is Carla and welcome to Lesson 5 of Kids Art Week. Today we're going to make Picasso dogs and every year we do a different version of Picasso dogs. And what we're doing is um, Picasso, along with his friend Georges Brox, developed cubism, which is a way of working where you um, draw something looking at, all looking at something from all different directions. So, for example, you might look um, at draw a face with someone looking front and then also the side and maybe even the top of the head. Here is a sample of a portrait where there's two eyes on there so that shows the front but then there's also the profile here so that is sort of a, a cubist example. Here's another example of um, a cubist painting and it kind of underscores that you're just seeing uh, parts of things like little bits and pieces kind of like jigsaw puzzles that give you a clue so there's a, um, a guitar here and some hands and a flute but you don't see everything so that's kind of what we're going to be doing this year with our Picasso dogs we're taking them 3D and uh, making little sculptures um, out of paper and staplers um, this is a sample of one that's kind of almost like a normal dog. Um, you have sort of the nose, eye, an ear, a tail, and then maybe the paws. So it's still kind of silly, but it's more normal. You can also take it really wacky and put the tail on top and the eye on the bottom and um, a foot back where the tail is. Um, here's one also that I really decorated. So this is the kind of project that you can really go crazy on if you want to. Um, the other nice thing about these things is they, they work as sculptures, but then they also work as books. So you can really just kind of fold all these pages in to make a very unusual looking book. So I can't wait to show you these, so let's get started. Okay, the supplies you'll need. You will need a piece of stiff paper, and I like this watercolor paper, it's nice and thick. Um, so watercolor paper, watercolors, a brush, and I have a kind of a one inch flat brush, and that's because I wanna just do a, a nice pass over all the paper. So a big brush, um, some scissors, a stapler, some markers, a pencil, possibly a pen, and some water and a paper towel. So the first thing you're going to do is paint both sides of your paper. So I am, and it, you can choose any color you like. I'm going to go for this pink here. And it's okay if it's light um, because we're going to be adding um, details with marker. So if it's light, it's okay. But basically, you just want to cover the whole thing and if you leave a little white, that's okay too. And that's all there is to it. You would let that dry a little bit and then you could probably turn it over even before it's completely dry and do the other side. Um, I have one here that I did earlier and it's painted on this side and that side. So the next step, once it's dry, is to cut it in half. Now, if you have a bigger sheet of paper or a smaller piece of paper, um, well, you'll get a bigger dog or a smaller dog, or you can cut it down so that it, it's about, you know, five inches by seven. So take one of your sheets, and what you're going to do is, um, I'll take a pencil. You're going to take your pencil and draw kind of a... Um, a loop here and have it go off the edge and then a big loop there. So it's like a small hump and then a big hump. So I'm going to cut that out. And again, you don't have to um, cut it out exactly where your lines are. Um, and then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 
pen, pencil, and make two little marks, one right here and one right here, because I want to make my second piece to be the same height. Um, but other than that, it can be as long or short as you want it. And one thing that's kind of important is you want the edges on this part to be flat. So when I cut, I'm just going to cut this and I'm going to cut it as straight as I can. Once again, if it's not completely, totally straight, that's okay too, but um, that gives, that allows it to stand up on the tabletop. Okay. So I have these two pieces and I just want to check to make sure that that, this size, this, this is about the same height as that, and it is. And then now I'm just going to fold this one kind of in half, maybe not completely in half, but. And then I'm going to fold this one, making sure that this um, edge is lined up right there. The next step is to staple these together so that it'll stand up like that. And so all you need to do is put the folds together. And on the butterfly one, we drew a line, but here we don't have to because we have the fold to, to act as our line to tell us where to staple. And this is the body, basically, of our dog. Okay, so here's the Picasso part. Um, get your other sheet, and on your paper, draw an eye anywhere on the paper. And then you're gonna draw a second eye that is twice as big as your first eye. And I'm gonna draw a different kind of an eye, too. Next, dogs have tails, so let's do a tail. I think I'll do kind of a shaggy tail this time. What else do dogs have? They have ears, so let's do an ear. What else? A tongue. And a paw. And now we're just going to cut these out. One thing that I think makes it easier to cut is to sort of cut them out in big chunks. I mean, I'm, instead of keeping it as one big chunk, cut it out into smaller chunks. And then you're going to just cut all these out now. So cutting is um, a fun thing to do. <laughs> um, if you are having trouble cutting, ask someone to help you. Um, but the main thing to worry, the main thing is just to not worry about getting it perfect. Um, all the little mistakes that you might make in cutting can end up being nice um, fur or a little bump on the dog. And you may wonder, why didn't I have you do two paws? Or why didn't I have you do, you know, two ears? Well, that is something you can add later if you want to. But we're going to just start with, um, with the one. Because remember, it doesn't have to look like a, a, a perfect dog in the end. It could look like a really weird just combination of paper and and... And the idea with cubism is that you don't put everything on the paper, that you leave some things to the imagination. Because your mind wants to fill in the blanks. Okay, I'm almost done. Just have to cut out my tongue.
And then I love to do this next part. There's two ways to do it. You could color all these and color this and then put it all together. Um, that's a great way to do it. Another fun way to do it, which I kind of enjoy more, is putting it all together and then coloring it once it's a book. Uh, so I'm just going to get started and I'm going to use my stapler again to, to attach my elements onto this animal, which I've told myself it's a dog, so it is a dog. <laughs> Looks like a whale if I put that there. I'm thinking this; these could be almost ears, so I might put my eye there and see what happens. I might change my mind later, but that's one thing. This tongue can be an ear, or it could be a tail. It doesn't have to be what I started out doing. See, already it's turning into a silly dog, but I'm gonna go ahead and staple it on there. But I have to use all my pieces, so now what do I do? That kind of works. Let's see. You know, that <laughs> this, this one's coming out looking kind of like a, a regular dog, but I kind of like it. So let's go for it. I, I thought that would be, that looks kind of like a funny paw. So I'm going to put this last one on. And then I get to color. So I'm going to look at my, um, my dog. Uh, the way I folded it and I have I folded I put him on there in a way that isn't really foldable so I'm gonna go ahead and fold it so that it can go back or forth because that's what this project is and um, I'm just gonna kind of look at it and see if there's anything I need to add I'm this is uh, that looks kind of cool and Picasso like this is an eye but if I wanted to I could add a different eye here and make this into sort of a nose um, but I think I'm ready to, just to start coloring. Um, so I'm going to start adding some fur. And um, some of the dogs that you guys will make will be really complicated and there'll be lots of different folds. Um, and then others will be a lot simpler, like this one's kind of a simple one. And then also, if I wanted to, I could add a few more elements, like, you know, I can add another paw or um, another ear or some kind of, you know, another eye if I ended up using my, my eye for a nose or whatever. Um, I'm thinking that's still fur. Kind of like his ear, the back of his ear. And this one maybe is the front of his ear. And then just then I used this staple as sort of like a line, or I tried to, I'm kind of hiding the staples in the, in the line. And this is your dog, and it's your uh, choice, like how colorful and how um, normal to make it. You can just use brown if you want, or you can just make it a Christmas dog like I am, <laughs> or whatever it is you like. Um, the thing I like about markers is um, you can layer them so that they're, they make it, it's more than just um, the red. Let's say if I added yellow on here, then it just makes everything um, look a lot more interesting because there's now red, yellow, and then a little bit of orange in there because the yellow kind of um, 
goes on top of the red and that makes an orangey red. Another thing that's great to do with um, water soluble markers is just take some water and you can smear it. I'm going to smear this red. Um, and water soluble means when you add water to it, it kind of moves or it goes somewhere. So look how cool that is. I'm going to do it for part of this, this one too. So that makes for a brighter animal. Once you add your wetness, you need to let that dry so you can, um, you'll, you, you'll just have to sort of like have this sitting up while you work on this part. And then as soon as that's dry, you can turn it over. Another um, way to use water that's really kind of fun, I know this is, this is a little bit wet, but that's okay, um, is to take your, your marker and maybe draw um, big circles. And then I'm going to take my water and just go on the um, middle parts. So I'm trying to darken the parts in between and let it spread out a little bit. I don't know if you can see that, but it's spreading out a little bit. So that way you're not um, just covering the whole thing, but you're you're only covering this middle part so that the dots are pink and then the inside is a, a darker pink. If I wanted to go even darker, I can start adding other colors too. Um, so this is a great project to do. Um, when you have lots of time to let it dry in between layers. Um, remember, it doesn't have to look like a dog at the end. It can look like a chicken, and then you can call it a chicken dog. Um, I think he's, he's turning out kind of cute, especially his little curved body there. Um, another thing I like to do is, is add dots that are you know, small and large so that there's uh, contrast in your design elements. So contrast means something that's like widely different. So like dark and light is a contrast, uh, would be a contrast or big and small. So I might add some small dots on this little area. And then I don't know if you guys have a color wheel, but um, sometimes if I don't know what color to use next, I know that the colors that are across each other from um, on the color wheel, um, they're called complementary colors. They look good together. That would be red and green, blue and orange, and then yellow and purple. Um, so if I don't know what to do, I might add red over here, knowing that red and green really look good together. You can think of Christmas colors and to remember that. Stripes, dots, fur, curly cues, stars, whatever it is you want to add to your, your animal. And don't forget that every time you add with the marker, you can also go over it with um, either a layer of watercolor or just a plain layer of water. I'll show you one more time and then I'll set you loose. Okay. All right.
Thank you so much for joining me this week for Kids Art Week. I can't wait to see your Picasso dogs. Be sure to color all the parts, add parts if you need to, and um, I hope to see you again sometime. Thank you so much.